let's start with the ears. So I've cut the ears out from the pattern and on the book I need to do interfacing. So what I've done is I've already ironed the interface on. So if you iron the interface onto the wrong side of the fabric, it just gives it that little bit more stiffness. So you've got a patterned piece and a felt piece. So you've got two of them because obviously they're the ears. So what we need to do is now put them together like so and then I'm going to stitch all the way round to the point and come back down. I'm going to do that on both the ears. Okay so I've sewn the ears together now and I've also put them the right way out and they were hard work to get the right way because oh, of the paper it makes it a bit um, stiffer so now I've it says in the pattern that I've got to do a central stitch line to stitch these two pieces together and then I've got to fold them to put attached to the head so I'm just going to go ahead and do that next stage so it says here I've marked the eyes from my template my template is here and I've cut two out for the head so I've marked my eye bits in and it says to fold the ear onto each other the, the fabric sides are touching each other and then with the head where you've got the notches here to pop that there and pin it but it's quite fixed I'm just going to put a, a clip on it there so it says to go ahead and sew this in place and give it sort of a lot of back stitching because it's quite thick and I don't want it to fall out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So now I've sewn the ears on. Um, I just want to really stress that you need to sew the ears on sort of on the opposites. Sort of like that. So what we're going to do now, we're going to... I'll do it off camera but I'll pin it all and I'm literally going to sew round round these bit I'll stick the ears in stick the ears inwards and sew round and down here so I'll do that and I'll show you how that looks once that's done and all I've done here is I've really gone like two or three times back stitched so it really secures those ears in so I've now sewn um, her together and I've poked her out. I've really gone over the bunny ears. I've gone over it like backwards and forwards a few times inside. Oops, and there's the eyes and the eyes. And when I first did it, even though it's still got a bit of that ridge there, it had like a really big ridge. It looked like it had a big lump on its head. So I've just sort of sewn it down a bit just to adapt it. So I am now just going to get some stuff in. So I'll just grab the stuff in and I'm going to start stuffing her head because it says I need to stuff the head. Now I imagine that at this stage if you were going to put safety eyes in I would put them in now because obviously the back in. Um, it does say to put a button on it and I am going to put buttons on it because I'm going to probably give it to a child that's seven or eight um, if I was going to give it to a baby or a younger child I would probably embroider the eyes or put the safety eyes in um, I tend to do embroidery when it comes to really small children because I just I don't trust the fact that they might pull them out anyway so I've got my stuff in here so I'm just I buy my stuff in I bought my stuff in online but sometimes I get it from the range um, or you can if you've got an old pillow, you could use the stuffing of that. So it just says here to stuff the head through the neck opening using pieces of stuffing to build up the shape and tuck the neck seam allowance into the head. So tend to do it a little bit by a little bit. So just to give it a nice shape. 
some more stuff and you surprise it surprises how much stuff in these even these small toys or these small little bear things are so Are nearly there because I can feel it's really quite firm. Whoop. So there she is, quite firmly stuffed, and it says to tuck the seam allowances in. <coughs> so imagine when I come to sewing that on, I can tuck them in a bit. So that sort of like tucks in there. So now I have stuffed my little bunny's head and I've got the little bits for the eyes. So later on I'll put buttons and then I'll do the embroidery. But for now it says to tuck in those seams just to put to one side and then we're going to move on to the legs. Okay so now I'm going on to the leg. So it says on the pattern that I'm to sew all the way down this seam here can see and then just sew up this bit here then I'm to put my foot pad right side facing inwards to line up these bits here pin it all around and sew around it's a little bit fiddly and then once I've done that which I'll show you because I've done one already so this is his beginning of his leg her leg rather um, stuff the leg bit and then they've said to like over sew it going up and stuffing it as you go so in a minute I will show you how I'm going to probably sew that up and stuff as I go because it's just going to make it easier because it's quite a skinny leg so I'll come back to you so this is um, been sewn up here and sewn around here and I've literally clipped the fabric on the bottom and it, as you can see it's really fiddly to do and now I've just got to sew all the way around to put the foot pad in I'll do that and I'll come back to you okay so now I've got my two feet and they're stuffed and now I'm gonna hand sew so I'm gonna start sewing the bits together hoping you can see this I'm gonna try oh god it's so fiddly when I have to do it that way oh, right. I'm gonna do it use a ladder stitch which is sort of in that way I've I've doubled the the thread as well kind of in that way so what I do is I'll do that all the way along and then when you pull it shut it should sort of shut in the seams and as I go along as well I'm just going to um, put the stuffing in and stuff as I go so it doesn't make it hard at the end when I've gone all the way up there and I can't get the stuffing down to there so I'll do that and I'll come back so here are the feet you can see they're done and I've done a ladder stitch going all the way down and stuffed it as I've gone as well so that is the two legs done along with the head so I think the next bit is the body okay so I'm going to start on the body and it says to over sew so I'm going to have to hand sew this rather than do it on the machine and these are the this is the pattern piece for the body you can see it put it sideways and it's to cut three of them in felt so what I've got to do is then sew them in like a triangle if that makes sense I'll get the camera and the angle can you see you can see so I've literally 
got to over sew down this bit. So I'm going to do that off camera because that's going to take a bit of time. And then I'll come back and show you once I've done that. So I just sewn one side, just over sewing. And now I am going to join this to this bit. And once I've done that, I will show you where I'm at. Okay, so I've sewn these up and I've left a gap. I should have said that you need to leave a gap here. So you're not sewing the cone all the way up. So, well, it's not a cone, but it looks like a cone. And I've done extra stitches there on the machine, even though it says just to over sew. It's just to make it more stronger. And now this is going to be like the front of the body. So now with my foot, I've taken some stuff in at the top and sewn it flat because I want a flat bit up there. So with the feet facing this way, I am just going to place that foot in there. And you see this first seam. Let's see if I can... Let me get my clips. This is the first time making this, so... I'm bound to make mistakes as I go, but we live and learn. So let's just pull the next one up and I'm just going to clip that. On there as well. Let's get my clip ready. So I've got my two, two feet now. He looks longer than the other. I don't want him to have one long. He shouldn't have one leg longer than the other. Make sure he ain't got one leg longer than the other. Okay, that's fine. So then I get this bit here. I'm going to do this off camera, but I'll show you. This is the round bit, and see where I've done the notches? The notches have got to join the back seam and the two side seam. So I'm going to pin that off camera, and I'll come back to you. So I've now pinned this. As you can see the round piece, I've pinned that on. There's the little feet sticking out the end and I'm now gonna go and sew all the way round and that should capture the feet, the tops of the, the legs in rather. And then once I've done that, I can pull it out, stuff it and then sew up the other hole. But I'll come back and show you that. Okay, so I've sewn all the way round, way round here and now it's time to turn out and it helps that you've got your legs to pull, so you're just literally pushing the bits of materials up. I'm just going to make sure. Got that round bit where he sits. She sits. I keep calling it he, it's a she. Oh. Let's see. So now I've just got to stuff the body. And then apparently sew that up. So I'll do that. So now Luna has been stuffed her body. She's got her legs there. Her body's been stuffed. And you can see the opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ladder stitch. Because I kind of like the use the ladder stitch. It's kind of invisible. And I'm literally going to sew her up. And then once I've done that, I'm going to get her head make sure the seams are put in and I'm gonna literally sew a head on and then we'll come to the arms so I'll come back when I've done that so now I've just got to do the arm so I've got four pieces for the arms here this is how Luna is looking so far she's got her head on I did a ladder stitch all the way around I've done it sort of doubled so obviously I've not done her eyes or her nose yet but I'll show you that later so it says again 
to do an over stitch to stitch from here round going in at the from there and coming round and round to about here and it has a cross there so I've got to do the cross that's on the actual thing because that's where the button will go um, however I may do what I did a minute ago I might over stitch it and then go around with the machine just so it's nice and secure and nothing comes unraveled and you don't see seams because if a kid's sort of like dealing with it you know what I mean they, they might pull it apart so once I've done that I'll come back to you so I have now sewn the arm so I did what I said I was going to do I've over sewn all the way round and up here and I then done it on the machine as well if you can see just to give it that extra and then you've got an opening here so I'm going to turn that one in, inside out in a minute but I've already done that to this one so you can see there's her little hand and what I need to do which I will do off camera is stuff it and then sew that shut and that will be the arms ready to sew on and then I'll come back to you I have now um, stuffed the arms and stitched them together so we've got the two arms all nice and firm and now I've just got I've just been going through my buttons and I've found a couple of vintage buttons that I'm going to put on the arms and I've got a couple of black buttons here that I'm going to use for the eyes and I'm probably going to use that with white cotton so the white looks like the pupils and I've got a doll's needle if I can pick it up so oh, I've got too much cotton everywhere so here's my doll's needle it's quite a long needle so it goes all the way through and I've put the grey cotton and double double threaded and knotted it so I'm just going to turn it around so I can see to myself just to line them up because I don't want to get them in the wrong place so that looks pretty good to me and the thumbs are forward so now I just need to put them on so what I'm going to do before I even touch the buttons I'm just going to go in this way so I can hide my knot and then try and come out where the cross is that I've done done that oh and it's gone away with the way for it because I haven't done the knot thick enough so let's just do the knot a little bit more I was hoping it would catch right let's try again so this needle is such a good investment if you are going to be doing dolls and soft toys and stuff right let's hope this catches that's better so then i'm going to get my button oh, i've got no hands i'm trying to hold his other arm on so let me just i'm going off camera here i'm sorry so i'm just putting that through the button there i'm trying to keep that as straight as possible so if i can find that that cross we just turn it around this way and you might be able to see the side and then i can see the other side where it's coming out and get my cross that's a bit high no. try and kind of eyeball it so there we go so you see the cross there where i've come out and through so the first couple of ones are a bit fiddly because obviously everything's still loose and you want to just try and get it all together once you've got it all together it's not so bad 
Right, he's sitting on the bum there, so let's just pick that up. I seem to pick this needle up right. So, go through one hole. So the reason um, she has buttons on her arms and that go through means that she'll be able to move. She'll be able to move her joints. Like a lucky dip. There's the things coming out. Ooh, right, there it is. Okay. So that's that. So I'm going to pull it quite tight and then I'm going to go through quite a few times. Of course, I want this to be quite firm and I do want. I don't want her arms to fall off. Keep going backwards and forwards. Try and give it a wiggle to see where your hole is. That's snapping it. in that one the only thing I find really hard is trying to knot it off with a really long needle that's my only bugbear with these needles because look I can't now get in there so what I'm going to do I am going to just cut that thread cut that thread there Get rid of the long needle. I can always go back in with the long needle if I need to and do some more. But now I'm just going to go and get a shorter needle. See if I can thread it. Oh, the light's not too good in here. I'm just going to put my craft light on just for me to thread it. I know it's a bit glary on the camera, but I'll turn it off after. Right, so that's in. Right. And now I can just sort of go in there. I just come out there for the minute with that and then I'm gonna wind it around a few times. And then just really try and just make a knot. Just gone in the fabric again. Gonna go through that bit. That makes a knot. And it's out. Right. I just need to thread it again because I don't like just to knot it and leave it. I like to take it through the fabric. As you can see, I kind of started this product this morning and now it's evening. So I can't see a thing. <laughs> and yes, I am getting a bit tired. It's really difficult because there is two to thread and, and I've got a really small eyelet one and I should have found a bigger needle. Right, that's done. I'm literally just going to go in and through. Take that out there. Put my needle there so I don't lose it. Then just cut that thread off. And there you have. She's got arms that move. And she's got her buttons and her vintage buttons there. I might just go just a bit on the safe side to just do it a few more times but I'll do that off camera so you've got the idea and then I'll show you how I do the eyes and embroider the nose she's just there she needs to be able to see so I'll come back to do that okay so I've just gone and reinforced her arms a bit more sewn some more out and it's 
really solid so I'm pleased with that so now I'm just going to put her eyes on so I'm not going to use the long needle I'm going to use a normal size needle and I'm going to use white thread so to start with I am literally going to pick up the material there because I want the knot to be underneath and not to show so I'm just going to pick up the button here and I'm going to do cross crosses so I should really use a long needle but there's not a lot of it's not a big space to go so I'm going to use my little needle take it over here so I'll just show you this way Oh my god, her eyeball's falling out. Right, okay. I'm trying to do it so it's not too twisted. So there's one eye in. So now I'm going to take the other needle. Oh, um, sorry, the other button. My fingers and thumbs tonight. The other button. And I'm going to do like a crisscross. Gonna take it back over. So it's really fiddly. Right, where's the trying to do that stabbing myself? There it is. Right. It's getting all twisted, so I'm just gonna have to untry and untwist it. That's it. I don't want to pull it in too hard because I don't want her to, to sort of be in like that. So I'm going to do another cross there and try and get across to this one. And it gets a bit easier when the buttons are actually attached. So back in there. And I'm going to do that a few times just to make sure that her eyes are on securely. And then um, once I've done that, I'll get the thing for her nose ready, the embroidery thread, and I will show you how I do her nose and mouth. So I decided that I was going to give Luna some eyelashes. Um, it doesn't say in the book to do that, but I want to give her a little bit of character. And I just think adding a little bit of detail is really nice. And when I do the nose... In the book, she just has a nose, she doesn't have a mouth. And my five-year-old son told me that she's got to have a mouth. So if I don't do that, I'll be in trouble. So I'm just going to show you, I've done one eyelash. I'm just going to do another eyelash. So basically, I want it to sort of, oh, right off camera, I'm so sorry. I want it to sort of curve around there. So I'll do a bit there and then go up. And then just through this is just black cotton doubled I'm not showing you very well because I'm getting my hand in the way so I'm just gonna go back in there but then I'm gonna go back down here that's one eyelash and then do just a little another one there because on the other side it's shorter so I'm just trying to match them up a little bit if I can and that goes in there and I'm just gonna so there you can see she's got some eyelashes so she looks pretty so I like that I've done the white cotton so it looks like she's got pupils and she's got some eyelashes so I will just quickly tie that off give that a little knot and then stuff that in there and come out somewhere else and I can cut it Ooh. things getting stuck on everything so that's that one done so now 
haven't got any dark brown so a bit hard to see on camera I've got like a beigey browny colour one of this like this colour a bit like my top really and I'm literally going to do a satin stitch so it says on there to to do it about measure about six and a half centimeters which oops, it's quite big I suppose no that can't be right oh read it properly from the top of the nose it should measure so it should start about if you give me a needle there see sometimes I just don't read things properly and I just do it anyway so I'm going to keep my finger there because what I want to do is just basically come up and hope that that knot gets buried if I pull it and then basically a satin stitch I'm doing it off camera again I'm so sorry a satin stitch is just literally going up and down I'm going to try and cover that knot the best I can and this might take me a bit of time because you've got to just really try and pe be as precise to each other as possible. And I'm going to do sort of up and down, up and down that side, up and down, up and down that side. And then I will come back and I'll show you how I'm going to give her a little mouth. So here she is. She's got her eyes with her eyelashes. Her button eyes. And I've just done a little satin stitch nose there for her I'm not going to do the normal go down the line and do anything I'm just going to do a really small mouth just because I think I want her to be smiling so I've just brought my cotton out here and I'm just literally going to take it in here and up a bit because I want her to be smiling so she's got straight bit there oops come back in and out the other side so she's got a bit there oops so I literally, I'm going to tie it off, but I've just literally given her such a really small little smile. Because in the book she doesn't have any mouth or anything like that. So, just because I thought I'd give her something nice. So, I'm just going to go in here. I'm gonna so, um, today I'm just going to finish off. Um, Luna Lampin's bunny I'm going to make her a little towel so I bought this little A4 sheet of fur, white fur I can't remember how much I paid for it but I got it on eBay and I'm going to use this just literally to, to make the round N not the stars inside so I'm just gonna I'm gonna use a pencil because I don't think it matters it's not you're not gonna see it and I'm just gonna draw around this I'm just gonna draw a circle and I'm just gonna quickly cut that circle out I hope you can see it I'm gonna shut the blinds a bit because it's really quite sunny here today Sun out a bit, right? There we go. So I'm 
I'm just going around like this. The only thing with fur, when you cut it, it kind of just goes everywhere, so it's a little bit irritating. So, so I've literally just cut a circle. Got all the fur's everywhere now. Let's move that to one side. So that's the circle bit with all the fur that's falling off because it's molting. I actually hate working with fur, I'll be honest. Um, you could make a little pom-pom out of wool, you know, the usual little pom-poms, but I just thought I wanted to make it look a bit better than that. So anyway, I've got thread here. With, I've double threaded it. And I'm literally just going to do a running stitch all the way around with all the fur falling off. I need to hoover this room anyway because I've got cotton and all sorts of bits all over the place where I've been working this week. Right. Just doing a running stitch all the way around. I should have got my stuffing out but I don't even know if I'm going to need stuffing. Let's have a look nearly to the end right I'm to the end so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna literally gather it all in no I don't need any stuff in because that just makes like a little pom pommy fairy towel I'm just gonna put a stitch in the other side just to secure that a little bit Stitch it over a few times, that's it. So I've secured that. Ooh. Right, so there's my little tiny pom-pom. Get the light. Pom-pom. And I'm going to stick it onto her bum. So I'm just going to sew it into place. I'm going in sort of like into the material into the fur material. Oops. Do I want to make sure the bottom of the fur material's in? Oh. Just go through with my needle. And like I really want to like anchor this down. So I need to go in like oh without pulling all the fur out. to go in quite a few times into the fur into the felt and just literally stitch it like loads and loads of times Sure the fur's fluffed up. Make sure you don't stab yourself because I'm not sure where my needle's coming out. Right, that can go in there. Oh. I'm gonna need a longer needle for this. Right, hold on. So that feels quite firm. Hold on, make sure I just I just want to make sure it's anchored really well because obviously if kids are playing with it I don't want it to fall off. And then once you've done it all the way round just put a little knot in it and then go through with the with the cotton and come out somewhere up here and then snip it off and then that way it buries it in. I'm just going to go and do a few more stitches so um, I won't show you that because it gets boring. But that's a little bunny towel. Let me get in the light. 